European unity was very deliberately emphasized when the French, German and British leaders ditched their limousines and walked to the summit venue, striding shoulder to shoulder. Europe's disagreements with Donald Trump are mounting. The Iran deal, steel and aluminium tariffs, the Paris Climate Accord. And having 24 hours earlier sharply criticized what he called the capricious assertiveness of US foreign policy, Donald Tusk lamented the current low ebb of transatlantic relations. I think that the, the real geopolitical problem is when you have uh, not an unpredictable opponent or enemy or, or, or partner. The problem is if your closest friend is unpredictable. It's not a joke now, and it's because I think it, it's a, it's a, this is the essence of our problem today with our friends on the other side of the Atlantic. But what can they actually do about it? The EU leaders speak of their unity and their willingness to uphold the Iran deal. But as time passes, doubts start to linger as to whether they can come up with a specific workaround to protect European companies from those US sanctions. The leaders here announced that the EU will this week activate what's called blocking regulations, aimed at protecting European companies from being fined by the US for dealing with Iran. And the European Investment Bank will try to provide assistance. But there's an explicit admission here that options are limited. With the Iran deal, we can look into granting some facilities to small and medium-sized companies. This is currently being examined, but I think we shouldn't encourage anyone to have illusions about us completely reimbursing the whole economy for specific measures of the United States. The President of France summed it up with a bleak assessment. Emmanuel Macron saying, Europe hasn't been tested like this since World War II. Paul Brennan, Al Jazeera, Sofia.